Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today is a much different video than I am used to making. Um, we will be discussing the possible familial relations that Emily has to Etain and his people, but before we begin, I'll be taking a poll on what the next video essay should be about. Uh, if you would like to vote, go check that out. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Millie is a member of the Rothschild family, first and only daughter to Talia Rothschild. Although not raised by her mother, Millie was paraded around a lot during parties and outings her family would throw. Her grandparents were the sole providers, Ruth and Morton Rothschild, who resided in a small town in Erfurt, Germany, which was mostly populated by the Jewish people. Amelie was raised in a sort of farmhouse. She was schooled by her grandparents until the 12th grade. She performed a lot of skills kids her age could not. For example, she knew how to garden, hunt, to craft. Things that you would use if you were in survival mode. There was a different side to her grandparents. Um, they were practitioners of black magic and because of her age and what they would entitle innocence, they would often use her as their totem. This would affect Emily much more in her 20s and well after that. Eating grew up in a royal household. His father governed most states of Atrovia, and they were a high-class family due to the curse that had been placed on them many, many millennials before. During his teen years, he was able to transform into his mature state adjutant, and Eitain was very educated on the life of humans and the history that came behind them. The books explained that he would travel through portals and choose a bride for the reigning king to continue his duties to the people and for the curse. Half Altrovian, half human, which was seen as a balance, the most delicate one. Emily's family was well known for their curiosity of magic and oddities. They were the top family to employ personal readers and tellers to their family's house name. Many readers have changed their surnames to Rothschild because they were officiated into the Rothschild house. Portal usage in common day game life is very new, but for the Rothschilds, it has been an ongoing phenomenon for years. On record, the family have known about the existence of portals for at least a hundred years and have communicated to those on the other side. This is where their readers learned most of their practices and advantage to set them apart from the others. At a young age, Emily discovered a portal not far from her grandparents' home. She grew accustomed to going to it. Unlike a portal in which you would fall down or crawl through, Emily had to climb upward. Here she often met with a man who showed her his side of the forest. Never to tell her his name, but often question her about her people and where she'd come from. He showed her many things that humans couldn't do. But on one night when she had planned to meet him, the porter had later vanished. Years after, she discovered that the person that she had been seeing was King Aaron. Emily's extensive knowledge of the portals is not to be overlooked, and her curiosity began when she was just a girl. Her relationship with Etain is very interesting and opens the door for them to have an ongoing dialogue. Emily does have information about his father that he has never known and her flirtatious advances aren't just her being flirty but genuinely interested in the son of the man that she had met. <sighs> 
thank you so much for watching. I don't know if this video was too short or not, but it's my first game essay in a hot minute and I didn't want to overdo it. I feel like the since we're like moving and gonna be more apart and we're gonna have a lot less time to do the game and I feel like the game is going to change and be different. Game essays might be a good way to keep the characters alive, to keep the lore deep and I don't know, just to keep things going. But um I really appreciate you for watching and listening and I'll see you another time. Bye.